boss monsters. Every deck has them, and the decks of the Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonists is no exception. All eight of these monsters represent a very special role, and that is that they are the mascots of their respective eras of the game. And for that reason, we are going to sit down today and figure out which is truly the best. And by that I mean, I'm going to nitpick a whole bunch of things because honestly, they're all used pretty effectively if we're being honest, but there is the questions of who's used a little more effectively in the story, who has the better duels and appearances, who's more synonymous with their part of the franchise. That's what we'll be talking about today. And I'm sure you'll all very much disagree with the list. Hey, that's what the comment section is for. But without further ado, let's get started. Coming in last place, and I think we all know it had to be this guy. It's, it's got to be Firewall Dragon. The one where half of you are like, but wait, wasn't the Ace Decode Talker? No. It was very clear that this was supposed to be Yusaku's main card that he would most likely use in most of his Master Duels. However, due to this card being way too fucking broken and becoming instantly despised when franchise hate was already at an all-time high just due to the creation of Master Rule 4, Firewall Dragon had to be banned after like a year and more or less just get dropped from the show, only making the occasional cameo appearance, which make no mistake, did make the TCG players very unhappy. So yeah, this guy literally had to be cut from marketing, changed the entire direction of the show, and due to an errata, now has basically they're trying to gaslight us into believing everything went the way they wanted the whole time. So that basically means it's got to be in last. Up next is Neos. I know I'm the guy who hates on GX all the time, but hear me out on this one. Neos shows up about a season and a half into the show, and when he gets there, he kind of makes Jaden's deck a lot worse, and a lot of his duels feel a lot more clunky by comparison to where the show starts. Apparently, the main reason they did this guy was so Jaden could have an ace to be like Yugi's, but he's just kind of like shoehorned in, and though the lore with him is interesting, I don't really think he matches Jaden's deck's aesthetic. I don't really think he adds a whole lot, especially as the story goes on. He's just kind of there and just doesn't really do a whole lot. So up next, we have Dark Magician. I know, I know, face of the franchise, how could he be so low? In the context of being Yugi's ace, he doesn't really win Yugi a lot of duels, and for a good chunk of the show, he's just kind of there. And I genuinely believe that when the manga started moving over to being about the card game, uh, Dark Magician was just popular, so that's why he just kind of got to be the ace and get lore later. Uh, but for the most part, he is just kind of a card Yugi uses until it's time for him to be the most important card in the world. Coming in at number five, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be surprised by this because I don't like this show very much. We have Galactica Oblivion. So many of you are probably wondering, how the fuck does this guy get to be ahead of two of the most iconic monsters in the whole franchise? Well, it kind of comes down to the fact that whenever this guy shows up, I think he's just used very effectively. Like whenever Udius busts out Oblivion, you feel like this is the guy who's going to win the duel. You feel like there is going to be some combination of spells or traps or any number of different combos that will allow this guy to kind of bring it home. And that's the point of an ace. It's the card that you associate with the protagonist the most, which you're obviously going to do for Udius. And if that's not enough, I think like it is always used effective in the story. It genuinely feels like there's no big convoluted connection between Udius and this guy, but I don't think there needs to be. I think they do a very good job of showing that when it's time to get serious and win the day, this is who's going to do it. That is literally the definition of an ace card. Coming in at number four, see, I don't always put Zale things at number one on these lists. We have number 39, Utopia. Utopia is a little bit lower than a lot of the other cards because I feel like in terms of Zale the story, he's just kind of the number Yuya, Yuma just happens to have. And that's kind of it. Like so many of the other numbers we meet have more interesting lore connections to their users. 
Uh, so many of the other ones kind of feel like they propel the story forward. I kept waiting for the moment as to why Utopia is so much more special or important or has any connection to Yuma at all. I know there's like the obvious things that you can see on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki at Trivia page, but for the most part, it kind of feels like he just ends up being there. That being said, when you think Yuma, you think Utopia. Like, it's always brought out, it's always used effectively, it always saves the day, it does everything Oblivion does, but has the lore connection, which is going to be what kind of propels the other ones going forward in the list. Uh, but yeah, I think Utopia is cool, and also people complain about it being used over and over again, but sort of like what I was saying with Oblivion, that is the point of an ace card. It's the thing you go into, the thing that's got your back, like... That is the point, and Utopia is that. Coming in at number three, we have Seven Roads Magician. Uh, I really like this guy a lot. First up, I know I haven't talked about Aesthetic a lot in this video, but aesthetically, I love how he sort of looks familiar. He obviously draws a lot of inspiration from Dark Magician, and you see some other iconic Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters in there. But the kind of cartoonish face and proportions makes him feel like his own fun, unique thing. So I feel like he's really this great, summary of sevens as a whole but in terms of the show i like the sort of interesting lore of the seven roads and it's this archetype probably created by otis to be used by yuga to help propel the world forward and when yuga doesn't do it in the way otis wants him to he turns out to have access to the seven roads cards himself I think that is kind of an interesting lore beat. I think the way the card is used is always effective. Yuga always knows how to set this guy up right, and it is just sort of fun to watch. The idea that he is at his best when Yuga's being smart, which is Yuga's best defining personality trait. So I think he's a great complement to the character. I think he has an interesting lore and use in the show. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking good ace. Coming in at number two, is honest to God, one of the most ugly motherfuckers this game has ever created. Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon is horrifying in all the wrong ways. Having said that, he is honest to God, a great ace in a lot of ways. For starters, there's just the lore within the story. The idea of the Dimension Dragons being Zarks and the way that it then makes you wonder how it kind of fits in with Yuya and his mind and all that. And also even the design, like the idea that it's this weird, unnatural monster thing, but that's the point of pendulum summoning and the point of the dimension boys in the first place. So it does kind of tie back into things and let's talk about the use. I mean, once again, like with utopia, Yuya uses this thing all the time, but he uses it the way it's supposed to. As someone who played Pendulum Magician a lot back in the day, you used this guy as your OTK guy. Like, that's what he did, and Yuya uses him right. Also, the fact that he can ride him so it fits into the lore of all the duels and stuff in the show, I think means this is a genuinely well-used card within the show, and yeah, he's just well done. <laughs> I have nothing else to say here. All right, so before number one, I'm gonna do something a little bit different and give you my ranking of these cards just based on my personal opinion. Number eight is Galactica Oblivion. Uh, don't like the aesthetic and can't rush tool, so he means nothing to me. Number seven is Neos. Never use the Neos stuff despite being a big hero guy, so yeah. Uh, number six is Seven Roads Magician because same problem as the other two, but I just love sevens. Uh, number five is Dark Magician. I mean, the fucking OG, and he's definitely a big reason I got into the game in the first place. Number four is Utopia. Card was a lot of fun for tripping people back up in the day, and I do love mechs. Uh, number three is Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. So fun to use. A lot of cool combos, a lot of cool strategies. Look them up. Number two is Firewall Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most degenerate card in Yu-Gi-Oh. Fuck you, it's my list. And this card was my ace for like a year, so I can't help but love him. And of course, naturally, that means number one for both lists is the Stardust Dragon. Honestly, my favorite dragon design in all of fiction. He is the perfect combination of elegance and viciousness. I love the way he is used in the show. The whole arc with him makes him feel important and the signer dragons feel awesome. And he is the perfect sum up for Yusei as a character, the show as a whole, and just the synchro era. Everything they have done with this card, 
they have done right. And I genuinely love him, and he is one of my favorite cards in the whole game. But what is he to you? Tell me that in the comments section below. And give me how you would rank the protagonist, what you thought of my list, all that. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me for more Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion going forward.